listen outside Christ the only thing we want to do are things to please ourselves and when we do things to please ourselves it is because our sinful nature is rising up Paul said in Romans chapter 7 he said I find two laws operational in my, in my life he said I find myself not being able to do the things I want to do he said I see myself gravitating towards things I don't want to do the things I don't want to do are things I quickly have the energy to do and the ones I really want to do I don't have the energy to do them so when the Bible is talking about your sinful nature here is talking about your earthly nature the fact that your earthly nature which is built by tradition built by system of this world built by things you have seen things you have read things you have heard things you have heard people say your nature gravitates towards those things and the Bible said if you live your life that way you will harvest decay and death you will harvest what decay and death when I see people in the church have you ever had people in the church campaigning for freedom have you had people campaign for liberty in the church yes I've had them several times please look I, I have my life to live when you hear the word I have my life to live have you had it in the church before uh -huh. I like to do my, I have my own mind I have to do what they, are craft, what they are agitating for is freedom liberty to do what they like but you see that liberty to do what you like is what destroys us there is never a time in your life you allow, God allows you to do what you like and he doesn't do that because he likes to cage you he does that because if he allows you to do what you like you will destroy yourself you see, listen to me. I've often said it. If you have not come to that stage in your life where you know for sure that you don't need Satan to destroy you, that without Satan, you alone is enough to destroy yourself. See, <laughs> stop binding Satan when you have not been able to tame yourself. Because what you're doing is that you're binding demon, whereas you are the principality. Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? You can't. Absolutely can't. The first way to start is to first of all deal with yourself. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 10. If you read from verse 3, it said, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. He said, The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty through God to the pulling out of strongholds and then casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought of the obedience of Christ. Verse 6 now said, Having the readiness to punish every form of disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. So, you have no right to be punishing every other disobedience when you have not completed your own. That's why we bind so much demon and not see result. Because as you're binding demon, demon know that you are not qualified to bind me. How can you bind me? You that disobey authority yesterday. Because in the realm of the spirit, listen to me, sir. In the realm of the spirit, what gives you the greatest power is your ability to obey authority. It's not, ability, it's not fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer is very good. Super good. I encourage it but see if you fast and pray and break authority you're wasting your energy the centurion man said to Jesus I'm a man under authority I said to one go and he go I said to one come and he come he said I I know what it means to be under authority he said Lord I am too small that you come to my house speak the word and my servant will be he will know what Jesus said he said I've seen great faith what is faith? The Bible says without it, it is impossible to please God. So when your faith is in, you know what that guy was simply demonstrating? Authority. He's telling Jesus, I know how authority functions. I'm too small to invite you to my house. You just speak the word. And you know sometimes, let me tell you how simple we break these things. Sometimes you want me to come to your house and I didn't call my same pastor Helen, you get angry. Because it, to, as you are concerned, I should come. Why shouldn't I come? 
You got it? Okay. So, he said, when you allow this your flesh thing to govern your decisions and the things you do, he said, listen, there's going to be consequences, there's going to be a result for it. And the result, what you're going to have in your hand at the end of the day is decay and death. He said, but those who live to please the spirit, we harvest what? Everlasting life from the spirit. When you read John chapter 6, Jesus said, listen, for those of you who sow to the flesh, he said, the flesh profits nothing. No, you see the gra gra, your flesh allow you to do the anogri, this one, that one. He said, when you are done, you will harvest wind. Nothing. Are we full? I'm saying here, sir. So I keep emphasizing on the fact that the Bible said there on, when, on Sunday. What I emphasize on is the clause God cannot be mocked. And I said to you, simply indicate the fact that the law of God is indispensable. You can't, you can't be too smart to outsmart the law of God. Every time you break it, something breaks. Are we full I'm saying? So I tried to show you a few laws. A few laws. Laws like showing people mercy. Laws like forgiving people. Am I communicating here? And then let's see another one and I will move to another thing today. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. I, I was showing you the, the first sermon Jesus preached. I show you in chapter 5. I show you in chapter 6. Let me show you in chapter 7 now. Can we look at chapter 7 verse 1 and 2? He said, judge not. Let's read together everybody. Look at this. Judge not, and you shall not be what? For with what? For what judgment you what? You judge, you shall be what? And the same measure you what? It shall be what? Can we read it from New Living Translation? Thank you. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. And what will happen? Huh? For you will what? Be treated as you what? treat others the same standard with which you use in judging others you will be what you see life is i told you when i started on sunday that life requires a lot of carefulness how many of us are falling victim of this plenty time ah and he called himself a pastor huh what kind of leader is that Huh? God took note of it. Unfortunately, the Bible said everything is, is, is open before him. There's nothing hidden. Even the one you didn't speak out that you lost in your heart, he had you. That's why the Bible said he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever ask or think, imagined in your heart, in your mind. Are you here with me? So, I'm careful. That's why when people come to my table and they say, oh, this person did this thing, I say, relax. First of all, relax. Learn from Jesus. In John chapter 8, the Bible said they brought a woman caught in the act of adultery, in the very act. In other words, they just grab her from the bed and bring her before Jesus. And say, Lord, we caught her in the very act. And you know the woman didn't, he wasn't defending herself. They say stone her to death. The law of Moses said stone her to death. And you know what Jesus did? What did the Bible say he did? And began to. Two things he did there. Two things. One, he humbled himself. How God, how he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but did what? Humbled. I know when I say he humbled himself, you mean Jesus humbled himself. But I say he humbled himself. Jesus, first of all, humbled himself. And then began to write. You know what he was doing with his finger on the ground, writing? You know what he was telling them? The law of Moses that you are quoting, I was the one who wrote it and gave to Moses. I wrote that same law. Those were the two things Jesus did there. But the most fascinating thing about that was that he humbled himself. 
And if you have ever read Drop That Stone, the Holy Ghost told me when I was when He was giving me that book to write. When He gave me, He said, "If Jesus had condemned that woman, He said He was done with His ministry." I said, "Lord, it can't be. How can Jesus, the heart of the Almighty, be done with His ministry?" He said, "That was the first time John three seventeen made sense to me." He said, "For God sent His Son not to condemn the world, but that through Him the world might be saved." So if Jesus has condemned that woman, he has contradicted his ministry, the purpose and the essence why he came. So you that is quick to condemn people, you that is quick to judge people. You see, <laughs> some of you that because you can vibrate in the public, you judge people's prayer life by their public prayer the show, the charade they put up. There are men who when you see outside, you will never see them pray. But in the secret place, they die. They are not praying to show you that they can pray. They broke past that level. Are you following what I'm saying? So, you that is quick to judge that person, eh? why, why will he do this way? Why? And when I look at our sense of judgment sometimes, I keep wondering, do these people read the Bible at all? You see, the greatest, the greatest havoc a Christian does to himself is to carry a Bible he never reads. And please, if you read and do not understand, ask questions. Ask people who have understanding of that scripture. Please. The Bible said the Ethiopian eunuch was reading and do not understand. Uh, and then, and then Philip ran close. The Bible said the Holy Ghost told Philip, get close to his chariot. And he got close to him and had him say, Philip, the first question Philip, Philip has understood what thou readest. And he said, how can I understand it? Except I don't even know who this person is. Is this prophet talking about himself or is he talking about another man? The Bible said from there, Philip began to expand the scriptures to him. And guess what? He was coming from church. And yet, he does not understand the Bible. So the fact that you go to church, or that the fact that you have even been ordained a pastor, doesn't mean you understand the scripture. There are, there are verses of the scripture. Books is what explained them to me. I had to read somebody else's book to understand what that verse was saying. Are you following me tonight? So, how do you judge people? The Bible says, listen. You see, the same measure. Unfortunately, when the Bible means say the same measure, he's not telling you if you judge people one cup, they will give you one cup. He's trying to tell you, we will give you back what that one cup can produce if it's planted. Because it's a seed you just planted. So learn it. Listen to me. Pastor, what about if people do wrong things? How do we do them? Galatians 6 told you how to handle them. Please put up Galatians 6 verse 1. You see, this is where it began. He started telling you things before he started telling you. Verse, from verse 7 is repercussion if you break certain rule. He began to explain to you that the reason why I'm telling you this, I started from verse 1, is that if you break these things, whatever you sow, look at why he said, he said, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, he said, do he say you who is who are what? Spiritual. He said, restore the person with the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. He said, bear one another's burden and what you will fulfill the law of Christ. Can you give me from another translation? Dear brothers and sisters, he said, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and then what? Humbly help the person back to the right path. He said, Be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Give me from Message Bible. Thank you. Leave. I love Message Bible sometimes. They are <laughs> the translators are, are, are exciting people. Leave creatively, don't live stupidly. Live carefully. Friends, he said, if anyone falls, what? Into sin. Forgivingly. Forgivingly. Do what? Restore him. He said, saving your what? And he called himself. 
and then uh, he's uh, why is he supposed to do so is he not the one that uh, you saw those comments the bible says save yourself of those things keep it listen listen when the bible says something do it because let me tell you how these things work when you begin to judge people what you do is that you automatically tell god this is what you're saying i told you i thought some time ago on spiritual signals pastor mary has also thought on it you see there are signals you spark here but heaven decodes it the way heaven decodes signals is not the way you decode them meaning heaven gives to some signals you make here on earth it's not what you give what you intend so heaven decode some signals that you give why every time you judge somebody the signal you send to some to god is that i have become perfect i am faultless so god said you have become perfect you for a perfect person doesn't need help so let me withdraw my help and give it to those who need it and then before that day runs over because you are imperfect you will fall into a fault and judgment will come the bible says god told abraham that children of israel were going to live 400 years in slavery right it was at 430 he came to moses and said i have heard their cry so what happened all those 400 years they didn't cry so god left them they were comfortable so he left them when they cried out he helped them so the bible said you should reserve your comment save your comment because in saving your comment you're saving your own self how do i know the bible said by the words of your mouth you will be judged he said <laughs> by the words he said you are snailed by the words of your mouth and you are justified by the words of your mouth have you read the story how he forgive a guy of his and then the guy saw another of his mates that was owing him and jacked him and took him you know what the master said he said i i forgive you that much and you couldn't forgive your friend this he said now i will teach you how it, the, thing, the, the, the thing works so listen to me sir in the name of our lord jesus christ as you are sowing this year as you are planting this year be careful the seeds you plant be extremely careful because many of many people are missed out of graces in life listen there are some people you see the judgment that is coming to them is that they will begin to take wrong steps you see them making mistakes you're wondering ah, is this person mad every little thing they take the wrong step they take the wrong decisions yes they are under judgment they are under judgment there are some of them leave them as a matter of fact the bible commanded you said when somebody is committing sin unto death he said don't pray for him it's a waste of time go and read first john you see that are you still here with me this night i'm just trying to show you things be careful i want to emphasize that be, do not judge anybody you can call a brother to order you can call a sister to order but not with a judgmental spirit not with a judgmental spirit you see i have come to discover that anytime you refuse to judge because you don't give two things at the same time that's why watch it you can't be talking and be thinking at the same time you do one so that you're thinking and when you are thinking you are calm i've discovered that you can't give strength and judgment at the same time it's either i'm judging you or i'm i'm encouraging you giving you strength to get up and run and let me say this to you sir in the name of the lord jesus christ this race is not sprinter it's marathon the fact that you are running fast and well today does not mean <laughs> that there is no stumbling block at the front did you hear me church take heed the bible says, take, take heed you that think it you stand take heed because most time god have allowed you experience what you judge other people for have, have you met people before who say i can i will i can never do that and then they did it have you met them i can never and now you did it oh yeah 
Let's stone you. Amen, somebody. Talk to me. No, no, no. I'm not that one pastor that will tell you I never made mistakes. It's not true. That's why the Bible says it's not of he that will it, nor run it. It's of God that showeth mercy. And if we know that it's of God that showeth mercy, then learn to also show others mercy. Give them a shoulder to lean on when they fall. Give them, borrow them one of your legs when they have injury in their own, one of their own and run along with them. Because before the day runs out, I like the way the Bible put it. He said, you might be needing what? Forgiveness before the day do what? Runs out. And if you need forgiveness and it's not given to you, that's where you understand. 